What's up, guys? It's Azran here, and CEO has a two-inch penis, but we already knew both of those things already. And I'm here to bring something a little bit different since my channel has been kind of devoid of mono content. I've been trying, I don't know, I've just haven't had the will to ladder that much. And then Desem gave me this idea to just talk about each type, you know, in depth as much as I can. So I'm going to start doing that, bringing in people, hopefully bringing in people to collab with that are actually knowledgeable in the types. So I'll be covering the types I know well, and I'll bring in people for types I don't know well. So obviously that means we're going to start off with one of the types I know really well, electric. So we'll take a look first at the viability rankings. I don't know if you can see them or not. I'm two ways to adjust my dimensions. So we have here S rank Golem and Raichu Golem form, Rotomosh, Coco, Zapdos, A rank Magnezone, Zerkatry, B rank Thunderous, and the last one we're actually just going to cover for relevance is D rank Stunfisk, and I'll talk about that later. So, the thing I see about this list is, understand, I like it, except for the fact that Golem is S rank. If anything, Golem should be A rank. Golem should be A rank on this list. Because, I don't know, I've said this multiple times in my videos already, so bear with me if you've heard already why I think Golem should be A rank. Because Golem is, is good as a nice, like, sash stopper, I guess. He provides a check to Volcarona, he provides a check to Zara X, which can get out of hand if Electric lets it set up, both of those mods set up. However, most people use it for rocks, right? And the problem with Golem is, the problem with Electric is, unless it's like fire or ice, maybe even ghost, you could say, even ghost. Most of the time, Electric is, Electric, um, is hindered by rocks more than it is. So like exchanging rocks, typically since Golem is a relatively slower mod, usually an, your opponent can exchange rocks with you. Like you get up your rocks, he gets up his rocks, but then the rocks will be detrimental to you. Especially since Electric's fundamental fundamental way of winning is Volt Turn. Volt switching out with, you know, every single mod which you learn Volt Switch, you turning with Coco and possibly Thunderous. Like, and you're gonna take rocks damage every time you come in. More more often than that, also, Zapdos is your defogger and he is weak to rocks. So when your defogger is weak to rocks, it's not really good to exchange rocks just to get them, get both rocks off the field. And then you're just starting from square zero and you've taken chip damage from both the rocks. And when your opponent has attacked you with a move, like, and you've just wasted PP. So for me, I think sometimes it's counterintuitive for the majority of matchups in Monotype where you're better off getting rid of rocks so that you have a field where there's no rocks on either side than trying to apply rocks and then put extra more pressure on. I feel that Zapdos and Rotom naturally prevent you from running a hyper offensive style where you can get up rocks and then just keep bolt switching out and putting extreme pressure because Zapdos and Rotom are, are very bulky Pokemon so they kind of hinder the whole hyper offense rocks bolt 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 until we both die kind of mentality that I guess people are trying to design with electric mono. So now we'll take a look at some of the, I guess, the common teams here. We've got Ion here, also on the sample teams here. Ion's offensive electric here. It's got all the mons on A rank, or the first five mons are the S rank mons for in viability rings, and then a B rank mon in Zerkatry. So, you know, Magnet Coco here, and then we can look at, actually, we'll look at the movesets later, actually. Then we can look at Smub's version of Electric that he submitted. I think it's somewhere here. Oops, I just think I just pushed over it. He's got, once again, the big Papa 5, the big S5, S rank Electric spawns, and then Magazone as his 1A rank mod. With Golem, Alola, Focus Sash, you know, Zap Plate, Coco. And then we have my team. My team, which is like the, I guess you could say it's the Heat. It's the Heat, this is my team. It's got no Golem, so it's got four of the S rank mons right here and right here. And then it's got an A rank mon and a B rank mon in Magnezone and Thunderous. And then I can explain my reasoning why later when we go over the matchups that each, each, um, what you call it, each mon has. So we'll take a look at typical movesets now. So, you know, one of, the one of the most essential mons to Electric is Tapu Koko here. 
And Tapu Koko can run a lot of things, but mostly what you see often is like a magnet or life orb with T bolt, U turn, and, and HP something. HP ice, whether it's an HP ice for Landos and Gliscors, or an HP fire for like a, catching a Ferrothorn on the Switch or a Scizor on the Switch, even though I think that's kind of, for Scizor it's kind of useless. Not many, not as many people run Dazzling Gleam, it, despite the fact that like it helps so much versus Dragon. It helps so much versus Dragon, but I don't see why. I guess people are just like have the mentality of you know, since Electric Sword is a disadvantage versus Dragon, you might as well you know try to improve your matchup versus other things that you're that has a more 50-50 matchup than try to improve a weaker matchup such as Dragon, which I understand that. And then some people run Brave Bird, will run Z-Move Brave Bird in order to, you know, take down like the one of the biggest banes of Electric, Mega Venusaur. Um, other other options, Taunt, I've seen Taunt Coco, but other than that, that's about it. Volt Switch, most, so like I said, most people run Zap Plate Magnet or Life Orb. I personally run a Specs Coco, I just abuse its speed and the fact that like Specs Thunderbolt and Specs Volt Switch hits like a motherfucking truck and even Gleam because Specs Gleam is able to get the kills on like Laddies and like Kyurems that I don't know if Life Orb or like Magnet can, can get. So always running max speed Jolly to outspeed to at least speed tie with Coco's, outspeed Weavile, outspeed Greninja, Torn, etc, etc and the items we already went over. So now we have next mon here, Raichu Alolan Formation. This is our speed control. This is the Excadrill of Electric with Surge Surfer. People can run Life Orb or Specs for the most part. In the early days of Sun and Moon, you know, you had Alola Raichu or Raichu EMZ, but it's not really that good. So it's either Specs or Life Orb, Fo Focus Blast, Psychic, Volt Switch, Surf. You've seen Grass Knot, T Bolt, um, Slice Shock sometimes. Psychic is so you don't lose to Venusaur, but you have to be careful of Muck, obviously, when you're facing Poison. Or Focus Blast is to hit Ferrothorns or, or T-Tars that are really annoying. Surf is a, is a nice way to deal with Lando. It's a nice way to deal with like Landorus Eye and other Mons. It's where, let's say like a T-Tar is like low, you don't want to hit, you don't want to go for a Focus Blast against it. Surf is a little safer option. Some people run Grass Knot for Hippos or the tricky gastrodons or even swampers, those water grounds, those pesky water grounds, and even lantern, I guess. So, in terms of EVs, most people run modest. I use, I sometimes run jolly. I sometimes run jolly because I just like to keep the speed up and just continue my pressure of chipping with bolt switch. But I feel like, especially for a life orb set, modest would be better because. Jolly, or not Jolly, Timid, Timid Life Orb, Surf does not knock out Landers, it does not knock out Excadrill, so like you have to rely on Focus Blast to knock out an Excadrill, so at least Modest in in the Surge would be able to knock out those Mons, which are really annoying to Electric. Moving on, Rotom is standard, it's usually your Fizz Death Wall, Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, Volt Switch, Hydro Pump, you won't see too much deviation for this, maybe 8 speed to outspeed Crawdon, but that was an Oras, that doesn't really happen anymore. People run, I think, 20 Spadef, because it's some, 20 or 24 Spadef, because it's some kind of OU calc, but I don't know anything about it. Zapdos. Zapdos is also pretty standard, but for the most, but it can be a little bit different. Got Defog here. Defog is a must. Roost is a must. So it's either Discharge or Volt Switch. And you have Heat Wave as your other attacking move. Some Zapdos were on Toxic, but that's few and far in between. You have Leftovers. EV spread though is kind of interesting. For my EV spread of a Zapdos, I run 16 speed. I, for, I think I was to outspeed, outrun Breloom, and then everything is just put, spammed into Spadef. But then you have like Ein's team. It's called Ein wrong. Ein Zapdos is very interesting. It has a lot of speed and a lot less spadef. 108 speed. I forgot what 108 speed outspeeds. Maybe was that like a? I for I don't know honestly. To be honest, I don't know quite honestly. I can't tell you because I don't use it that often. I just feel like 
the bulk that you lose by losing Spadef is it, you just lose a lot of bulk to use that. Just that it can't like one v one like a Gudra or a Dragalgy or a Hydreigon that's not like Dark Pulse flinching you per se. So that's my take on it. Then we have the first of the B rank Mons, the Circuitry. Most people run Choice Scarf. It can run Choice Scarf or or Z move or Psychic EM Z for Z Hypnosis Tail Glow. So then, if it runs Z Hypnosis Tail Glow, it's usually Thunderbolt and Energy Bolt. It's kind of like a late game cleaner. And then, but for Choice Scarf, which I like more, you can run Energy Ball, Hidden Power Ice, Thunderbolt, Volt Switch. Power Ice and Volt Switch. Maybe you could run Dazzling Gleam on Zergatry if you don't have it on Coco already. If, or if Coco has HP Ice, then that's a viable option. EVs are standard. Max Max. Max Max on um, Timid or Jolly, whatever it is. Same thing. You know what I'm talking about. Magnezone. Now, Magnezone, my Magnezone is completely different from others, but we're going we're to talk about first about the Magnezone that most people use, which is usually Specs. Hidden Power Fire. Hidden Power Fire. I can't spell Hidden Power Fire. Uh, Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, and Flash Cannon. Pretty standard. It's a good way to trap the Excadrill, because if you know the Excadrill goes, is going to go for the Rock Slide on the Zapdos, then bop, you can trap it, and it it's not going to kill you unless it flinches you down like 16 times. Um, it hits really hard, but my problem is you get walled to hell and back by those water grounds. So, you know, if Raichu or Koko does not have Grass Knot, then you're in trouble. So, in my magazine, I run, of course, my meme set, my weakness policy, HP Grass Mirror Code set. So, that's just out of the blue. But in con considering what, what the standard is for Magnezone, it's definitely. It's definitely HP Fire. It's definitely HP Fire trapping Magnezone. And it has 184 speed, I guess. 184 speed, a lot of people run a lot of speed on Magnezone to outrun, I don't know, maybe. Maybe that outruns like non-invested Scizors or Heatrans or something like that. Now anyway, we'll move on to the final two mods that we can talk about on an, that are relatively decent on an electric team. Thunderous. Thunderous. Thunderous is an answer to normal. Thunderous is an answer to normal and can be a form of speed control in case you're playing poorly and a setup mon gets out of hand, such as a Zard X or a Volcarona. So usually I think the moves to go is banned with superpower, U-turn, superpower U-turn knockoff. Some people can run will run fly in Z Thunderous, but I don't really like that. I used to run Prankster T-Wave, but then but then I ran into a replay, which you'll see later in this video, of why I don't run that anymore. But Prankster TV, like I said, to check Volcaronas and Zard X's that set up, or any other mon, like a, maybe a Komomo or a Dragonite that gets out of hand, you know, you can check it with, you can check its speed, I guess. So, this is your one physical attacker, because Electric lacks really good physical attackers, so you're almost gonna, always gonna make you're almost always going to see Thunderous as a physical attacker, at least for Electric Mono. And finally, they have Stunfisk, which I think is a pretty decent rocker. I don't know if it's better than Golem, but it does have its niches, as in it can take hits, all, it can take bulky hits because it does not have like a times four weakness. Its Spadef and HP are really good, and even its defense is not that bad with its HP. It gets Pain Split, Rocks. It can spread status with Toxic because it's it looks it's more it's more. It's more adept to spreading status because it doesn't have as much attacking power. So you're gonna spread status with either discharge paras, some thunder waves, or even toxics. So I think Stunfisk is a niche rocker pick, and it also stops the flow of like electric versus electric volt switching on you. So then you can gain momentum with that. But with that, now let's talk about some of the matchups that electric has. So we can take a look at whoops. We can take a look at first what I call our easy wins. The easy wins, in my opinion, ver that Electric has are versus Water, Fighting, Steel, and Flying. Like Water, like used to have Swiss Swim, but now with Coco Raichu, like Kingdra becomes obsolete anyway. Because I can just bring Coco in, like claim my kill, and then like go into Raichu and just click T bolting or Grass Nodding to my heart's desire. It's it's just not even funny anymore. It's it's honestly a beatdown, um, and I'll show you that in the replays later. The only thing that could like hinder 
electric like water on electric is like lantern swamp or a swamp bird versus gastrodon like a, a very choice heavy electric mono with like a choice scarf circuitry choice specs magnazone even like choice specs coco or something like that choice specs raichu if the water player predicts correctly then that could be really annoying with rocks up with from swamper like it could pressure the electric team and whittle it down slowly but other than that water doesn't really have too much water doesn't have too much for it maybe if you let a sharpedo set up to plus uh, or like a mega sharpedo set up to plus two speed but other than that i really don't see anything water is doing Fighting doesn't really have that much except for like a Terrakion to break through. Like if an uh, electric mo mono player plays his Tapu Koko and Rotom poorly and then the Terrakion is able to Stone Edge sweep, I guess that's a way that you can break through with fighting. But the fact that Breloom isn't even a threat anymore because Koko is always there with the electric terrain preventing a spore and then the Breloom has to think twice about that, that's and that completely hinders fighting even more, especially since they don't have a good electric resist. I don't think fighting has a... I don't think there's a fighting ground type. Let's check. Fighting ground. Yeah, there's no fighting ground type, so yep. There's nothing stopping the, the switching, the bolt switch, over and over and over and over and over again. So, sucks for fighting, I guess. Then we got Steel. Steel is also a pretty easy matchup. You just play the Excadrill right and there isn't really anything that you that still can do. I guess with like more of the Alolan Golems team with the 108 speed Zapdos, Steel is a little bit harder to deal with because then Zapdos doesn't take uh, take Heatran and the Magirna attacks as well because a fully Spadef Zapdos or a near Spadef Zapdos can eat up Ice Beam from Magirna. Dazzling Gleam can even eat up a Twinkle Tackle plus Ice Beam. I don't, I don't quote me on that, but it sure feels that way. Then you can just Roost all it, Discharge Parrot or Heat Wave kill it. As long as you just don't get your Zapdos Toxic versus, versus Steel, for the most part, Zapdos, a Discharge Zapdos has a Field Day versus Steel. And, you know, Exadrill. You just have to play around it because Rock Slide does about 56 to 58 percent to a max HP Zapdos with no defense. So you can just roost most of it back off and then adjust from there and predict accordingly. And like I said, Magirna, once again, if you're not running fully speed up, Zapdos can tear into electric. After two ship gears, it should be over. Even Specs, because Specs has no switch in. Like Specs, Magirna has no switch in for electric. Like Magnezone is not going to be a switch in. Like, Floor Cannon will still do a fuck because Magirna is just way too strong. And the final easy matchup I feel for Electric is Flying. If Flying doesn't have Landorus T or Thunderous T, once again, it's just Voltamania. Volt, 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 Volt. It's probably the hardest matchup, I guess, of all the ones I've mentioned so far of, uh, in the easy category, just because a lot of Electric Monster of Choice and then Zard Y comes in. After, Zard Y comes in and claims a soul for the most part. But other than that, Flying, you should be winning versus it. So now we can move on to, I think, the pretty easy matchups. The pretty easy matchups to me include Bug, Fairy, Fire, Ghost, and Ice. Because for Bug, for the most part, if you have a hazard, if your hazard setter is Fortress, literally Zapdos walls the fuck out of that, minus Toxic. Armaldo, Rotom can handle it well, and like you can easily chip down an Armaldo with Hydro Pump and then defog the rocks on a lot of things. You can defog on a Galvantula, you can defog on Scizor, you can defog on a Heracross locked into a close combat, like you can defog on a Pinsir, although that's kind of risky because the Pinsir could always SD. But you know what I'm saying? The only threat that Bug has to scare Electric is Volcarona. You let it get up plus one and you don't have like speed control or anything then you might be in for a rough ride so so just watch out for that because but the thing is good thing is most volcaronas nowadays are offensive and will run z move so they don't have that roost that bulky roost set anymore which used to give electric so many fits and then we have fire here once again biggest threat here is charizard x because once again, same concept with Volcarona, don't let it get set up and it will not break your team in half. Another potential threat on fire would be a little Marowak, but you don't see that as much. This is the threat that you'd probably be more fearful of on Ghost. But the thing is, Marowak doesn't have reliable recovery and you can just chip away at it, chip away, chip away, chip away, and eventually you can just slowly knock it out. But it does do heavy damage to your team every time it's in. Like if it's inverse like a Tapu Koko, 
something's taken a shadow bone to the face and it's not gonna be pretty so you have to always watch out for that plus I can set up rocks which once again I said is very annoying to electric the very relatively easy matchup you can just bolt out and bolt out and bolt out all you gotta watch out for is Bulu whether it's band or scarf because your priority is to take down Bulu honestly your priority is to take down Bulu because it can gain all its health back by horn leeching like you think you've whittled it down to like 20% health but then it horn leeches and then it gets back up to 50% and then you get grassy terrains healing and then it keeps doing more, more damage to your team while it keeps healing up and it just gets annoying so you always have to prioritize finding a way to kill that Bulu and another thing that makes the Bulu hard to kill is Clefty is Clefty will set up screens spikes are not as much of an issue because most of the electric mons are in the air like Zapdos Rotom, Fundy, but get screens is annoying you because then your damage is not doing anything and they can do a fuck ton back to you. It's just screens are broken. That's just my opinion. And you know, once again, piggybacking on the screens idea, if you are willed enough, then Azu can win with this belly drum Z, Z belly drum through screens. It can live most electric attacks without terrain and just run havoc on your team. And Aqua Jet Sweep you when Rotom is low. So those are the few things you have to worry about. These are the matchups I think that are pretty easy. Once again, it's fi Bug, Fairy, Fire, Ghost, and to a certain extent Ice if they're not running like double Mammo and stuff like that. Ice, I think I would lean towards the more medium matchup, which I think is more of the 50-50 uh, matchups where you could win, sometimes they could win. So, Ground is 50-50 matchup because Gravity puts in work, but the thing is, Raichu also puts in work, so it's just about who plays it well and how well he plays the size builder. Because most Raichus run Surf, so it's about, and if some Raichus are specs, a lot of them are specs, so it's about outplaying the Surf onto the Seismic Toad or outplaying the Lando not switching into your water resist or something like that. But once again, Lando getting up gravity sucks because an Excadrill has a field day, Lando itself has a field day, even something like Banded Mammal Swine will have a field day. So Landris is really annoying. Landris is really annoying in conjunction with Seismitoad. I would say Lando plus Seismitoad is what makes ground hard. Other than that, it honestly would be not too bad versus Electric, despite it be, despite ground being Electric's one weakness. And then another thing that's hard, Dark, because we've got Tyranitar and Bisharp. Tyranitar is a very reliable Stealth Rock setter, and the only thing that can stop it from setting self Stealth Rocks on Electric is like a Banded Thunderous Superpower, but then most Darks carry Mandibuzz, and most competent mono players know that Thunderous is like one of your few physical attackers. So more often than not, rocks are going to get up from dark side of dark is going to get up the rocks, and you're going to be hard pressed to find an appropriate time to defog it, defog them without activating Bisharp's Defiant. Although Sucker Punch was nerfed, and now you have a Tapu Koko which re resists Sucker Punch to take the hit, Bisharp can still win. Bisharp is still an end game win condition if your Koko has been chipped enough to the point that Bisharp can clean. So you have to watch out for T-Tar plus Bisharp on a Dark Mono. So another tough matchup here, I guess, would be Psychic. Psychic's main offenders, I guess, would be Choice Scarf V-Create from Victini, or Choice Scarf Blue Flare to end the game sometimes, and then Mega Alakazam. I could say Mega, Mega Metacham too, but Mega Metacham is banned now. So Mega Metacham is, operates the same as Mega Alakazam is, and it claimed to kill, but for the most part, Mega Metacham o code things. Alkazam two hit KO things. Like that's not a bad thing because you bring it in on you bring it in on like, I don't know, a Tapu Koko it's faster and it can Oko the Tapu Koko, but what are you switching in? Like if you switch in Magnazone, he's gonna focus blast the next next turn and you can't even outspeed it with Scarf. If you switch in Zapdos, it's getting two hit KO'd by a psychic for the most part. Like unless the Alkazam is running retarded EVs. So you're you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, honestly. For, for Victini plus Alakazam because what uh, Alakazam doesn't chip off Victini can clean up the V-Create Bolt Strike because like V-Create like Victini will pressure your walls like Rotom for the most part or even Golem and attain their chip damage break their sashes etc etc um other things in the medium category uh, I would say I kind of put Poison and Rock there but I would rather I'd rather classify them as harder matchups. These are the hard matchups for Electric. The ones that give Electric the most fits. And ladies and gentlemen, one of them is Rock. Because once again, T-Tar is there. 
Shuckle will guarantee its rocks, especially if it's Mental Herb. Like, those will get up rocks, and then once again, you're hard-pressed to find a way to get rid of them. And when, you're only, when Electric's only answer to rock coverage is Magnezone, and then that thing gets Whittle, and it's relatively slow from the likes of stuff like Terrakion, it, um, what else? Terrakion, Hilego, Mega Aerodactyl, it can get whittled pretty easily and it's not going to be fun for Electric, especially for a Choice Scarf near Hilego once it gets up its, once it gets up its Power Gem, and you know, Power Gem with its Scarf and gets the Beast Boost, like, you can bring in Coco and then bring in Raichu, but the, the Hilego can always switch out and set up its Sweep again later, so you always have to be, you always have to keep Magnezone alive, especially when you're playing versus Rock, because you don't really have anything else to switch in, to be honest. And then piggybacking on Nihilego, we go to Poison, which is also a hard matchup. Despite having the answer to Toxapex in Electric moves and the answer to Toxapex and Venusaur in Psychic moves, Alolan Muck is just so fat and and so thick that you're always going to have to keep Bolt Switching out on a Venusaur 9 times out of 10 because he's going to bring in Muck. You have to get the prediction right of when he stays in with his Venusaur or when he's going to go into his Muck or else he pursues you and that's a dead Raichu. Raichu can't knock him out with a stab and like T-Bolt and Bolt Switch is going to just bounce off an Assault Vest Muck. So it's really tough for you to deal with Muck because like 100 Spadef to 105 HP plus Assault Vest, sometimes people run max Spadef, others don't. because. At max Bedef, like Pursuit and Knockoff still kills Raichu, so you're doing no damage to the Muck while you are at risk of dying. And then for Grass, Grass is tough. Grass is a, grass is a very tough matchup with the Pharaoh, Cradilly, Tangrowth Core. That can be avoided, I guess, with the Magnezone, with the Magnezone trapping a Ferrothorn. However, Tangrowth is there, and Tangrowth can eat. A lot of hits from Magnezone, it can eat most of its hit heat electric stab. The only thing you'd have to watch out for is once again Flash Cannon. But the thing is, if you know that the Magnezone is going to lock itself in the Flash Cannon, you can switch into Ferrothorn and continue Leech Seeding on Electric. And then, you know, Grass will slowly whittle you away for like a late game Superior or maybe a Choice Scarf Rotom, I don't know, or a Nasty Plot Celebi. I don't really play Grass or watch Grass enough to know, but I've always struggled. And I've always seen that Ferrothorn, Cradilly, Tangrowth gives you fits because Cradilly and Ferrothorn can both set up procs and spikes and will your team down with Leech Seed and Toxic. It's just a very annoying core to deal with. And then we've got the two last hardest matchups for Electric, which is Normal and Dragon. Dragon to a less extent. Normal if you don't run Thunderous, if you're not running Defiant Thunderous. Like, it's tough because your only physical attacker would most likely be Golem, and then Diggersby is a bona fide switch in, and you're claiming a kill every time Diggersby's in. Chansey walls all of your special attackers. Porygon can wall most of your special attackers, too. Honestly, the only thing you can rely on for normal is honestly taunt. Like, taunting the Porygon, but then again, they can chip you away with Seismic Toss, and one, all you need to do is just get the Chansey or Porygon back in at the right time to recover their health back again. And if you do manage to spend, to to bottle all your efforts into killing both of these fat mons, then you've got late late game Diggersby, like I said, late game Meloetta, um, late game Porygon Z, even. So, what are you doing? You've used all your resources to take out these two fat walls, and you still have these hard hitters in the back to deal with. So, that's my take on it. And since most Cocos don't run Gleam, I haven't seen too many Cocos that run Gleam, especially like in tournament play, Dragon is hard. But with, but with Dazzling Gleam, it's a lot easier to deal with. But the thing is, you still have to predict which Dragon is the Scarf. Most of the time it's Latios, but you have to watch out for double Scarfs, like such as Scarf Hydreigon and Scarf Cure and Black. It's still viable. Your Galgi will dish a lot of damage to your opponent if you're not... dish a lot of damage to you if you're not running Magnezone, which... I mean, some people don't, but for the most part, Dragon is tough. And then in the back, you have Multi-Scale Dragonite. Multi-Scale Dragonite, if it gets a D-Dance up, it'll live and he hit, it'll live a Dazzling Gleam, it'll live an HP Ice. And let's not even forget about Garchomp. Garchomp stops your Volt Switch Parade, gets up rocks. Like, Dragon tails you around sometimes if it's not, if it's Mega sometimes. It even has Stone Edge to hit Zapdos, so it's not fun for you. Dragon is just not a fun matchup for Electric. So, now that I've gone over... I guess everything that I know about Electric, we'll check out a few replays. I know a lot of them are of my teams, but I don't, of, of me, I'm in the replays, but I don't always use the same team. 
So we'll look at this first one. This was um, my Monotype Premier League farm match. I forgot for week four. So Miyoko's got no Excadrill. What is he gonna do here? Like, honestly, let's take a look. Coco comes out, Heatran. What is it? Is it Scarf? No, it's Balloon. So I'm safe to Volt Switch. Boom, does 72%. Zapdos comes out. Magma Storm. All right, does a little bit, does a little bit, he taunts me, I keep attacking. See, now his Heatran's dead, now, I, now nothing stops me from spamming Heat Wave. And look at all the Mons I can defog on. I can defog on Sizzle, I can defog on Skarmory, I can defog on Mag, to a certain extent Bisharp, but that's risky, even Magearna. He's gonna continue to taunt me. Magearna's gonna go for the Shift Gear, Discharge, he's gonna go for the Z-Move, look at the Z-Move. Twinkle Tackle does 74%, and I knew that, because my Zapdos is Spadef. So, the non spadef Zapdos, the 108 speed Zapdos would die, but my Zapdos is hard body and just throttles. It just throttles. So he thought it was a roll, probably. It might have been, that would might have been a low roll with the, 100, with the 132 spadef Zapdos, but for the 250, the 236 spadef Zapdos, it's living that every single time. So, look, he's got nothing. He's gonna click X. I wall the rest of his team to death. Bisharp can't even set up because I'm gonna heat wave it. His only hope is for me to click heat wave and miss at that point. So that's that shows how easy it is versus steel. And now we move on to this replay. This this shows how easy it is. Even with Golem Golem. It's, it's pretty easy. Boom. Coco, easy lead. He has to go into size of he has to go into Seismic because he can't lose his Rain Setter. That's the only way X can put up, up an offensive versus Electric. And then Ty can easily safely predict that and just go for the Gleam. Boom. Does half. Yes, X is going to switch. He's going to switch predicting the Earth Power. See, Kinger's going to get some hits in here. But now, Raichu's in. And what does he do? Electricity's going to drift disappear. But now, Magnezone, Sack it. Back into Coco. He sacked his side of toad so now he's just free to click electric move for the rest of the game in electric terrain it's not gonna be fun sack the zapdos to bring up the um the weather later into coco boom back t-bolt t-bolt no he's gonna sack the kingdra again but like here you're gonna see just t-bolt spam nothing ekka had to keep the pelipper and go into size with toad but Ty could safely just Dazzling Gleam and chip the Seismic Toad, and then once hit the ground type was gone, it was easy pickings for Electric. So, no problems there. So now here's a, like a semi-hard matchup here. Or not semi-hard, this is like my pretty easy wins. Me versus Cancer's Breath, I'm using an Alolan Golem team actually, not my regular generic team. So you see, look, I go for U-turn, if I had Volt Switch, I'd whittle him down, but I can go into Zerka Tree here and claim a soul with Electric Terrain Thunderbolt. I'm gonna go for the Volt Switch though. He endures, going to Zapdos. He gets a Toxic off, but he gets no hazards, which is good for me, in my opinion. He's gonna go into Bulk here. I'm gonna go straight into my Golem as he goes for the Quiver Dance. I think I'm gonna predict him and go for the Rocks. No, I just go straight for the Sonar Energy. Yeah, not, not messing around. I wanna keep my Golem Sash. I can go back into Zapdos. I wall it to hell. Bullet Punch, Bullet Punch, boom. Raichu comes out, thunders, missed. Brave Bird, I even have Brave Bird to like pummel his bugs. So it's not even a problem. I've got Zapdos here as a sack. Boom. He gets the Moxie off, but now I'm in terrain. I click Psychic. Now he goes into Volcarona. We'll click Psychic again. He goes for the QD here. He's going over the Buzz. So I just choked here, honestly. I, I was afraid of Stone Edge missing, but I forgot that Volcarona's carry QD Drain, so it got him back up to health. And Return is not going to be able to knock him out. So I choked in that scenario. But, like, you can see that for the most part, I had an easy matchup. All I had to do was hit a Stone Edge, and I won for the most part. Because, like, Coco dealt with Pinsir, Rotom dealt with Pinsir, and even Scarf Circuitry deals with Pinsir afterwards. So it's not even a problem. So it was just me choking there that led to Bug to my demise. I have a few more replays for you. Endel versus a cast. This is when Medicham was around, and this is one of the harder matchups for Electric. This is my, I guess, medium matchup with Alolan Golem. Medicham's gonna come out. Medicham was just hard for everybody, though, to be fair. Got a fake out coming here, flinch, and then he's gonna switch out his Medicham. He's gonna sack Slowbro because everything on a cast team kills it. 
Into Zap this we go. Lottie does a fuck ton. Psy Shock. Um, let's see here. Drashi gets a rock up, so now a cast team is hard pressured to defog away as the Kogo is getting chipped. And then you can go in, into Jirachi to take Dazzling Gleams. Coco's out. Medicham is back in. He's gonna claim another soul here. Goodbye. Coco's back out. And then Jirachi is the sack. Now we can go into Medicham again. Fake out. Boom. Fake out. Does 61%. Then Bullet Punch should kill. Like, now what does he have left for speed control? Because Victini cleans at this point. HJK is gonna knock out the Rotom. That's not gonna save him. Zapdos is going to come out here, boom, he's going to go for the Ice Punch, goodbye, Bullet Punch on the Coco, goodbye, and HJK on the Golem, goodbye. Like, so, didn't even need Victino, but let's say he was able to kill the Medicham. Like, you see how severely weakened his Coco was, his Zapdos was, like, it, Victini just cleans with chip damage on Feet Create, Bolt Strike, or Blue Flare, so... Now we have me on the other side. I'm not rocking electric, but I am facing electric team with my rock team. I'm just going to show you how annoying and and no lack of... I mean, I know he's running a Galvantula, so this team is just not as good. But it's the fact that electric has no switch in for rock moves. See, all I'm going to do is get up rocks here. Like, I don't care if he EQs me. I'm getting up rocks, and then I'm winning. I'm going to protect, get some chip back up. I'm going to go into arrow here, predict that. I'm gonna go into the cargo, frustration, trying to get that burn. No burn for me. This is Life Orb Golem, Jesus. I go to Nihile, go for the Power Gem, boom. This is Specs Power Gem. What does he have to switch in? What he can counter back with? He didn't even go to Naraichu to try to knock me out, because he thinks I'm Scarf. See, so now I get another kill. Power Gem. Boom. Dead. Raichu comes out. Gigalith. See, now I eat it with Psy Shock. This is like a worse Tyranitar. If that was a Tyranitar, one, I wouldn't affect, be affected by the Psy Shock. And two, like a like Focus Blast, or not a Focus Blast, but a Surf or a Grass Knot would bounce off of me. So, goodbye. Oops. Into Arrow here. I can live, especially with the Sandstorm, too. So, no problems for me here. Just gonna click EQ freely. I still outspeed the Gilvantula. Boom, goodbye. EQ the Coco. Goodbye. Raichu's back, but he has to quick electric move to knock me out. Surf, I mean, he can do, but now I got Tarantrum here. Tarantrum wins. Surf is only going to do 63%. I click Outrage, and it's just a free Outrage spam, and I win. He's going to go for the Z move, actually. Z Hypnosis. But I'm under electric terrain, so it doesn't even matter. GG. That was a pretty easy win. I still had Scarf to rack in the back, even if the Zerga Tree was able to set up its Z Hypnosis. Like, not even a threat at all. And now we have this replay. You've seen this from MPL Farm League versus Entei. Normal. I mean, I had the chance to win with Thunderous. I played it awful. But the fact, look at this. When my best attacker to deal with Normal only does 72% to a chance, that's Bandit Thunderous. Like, you know you're in for a rough ride. And then you have to just predict rocks and toxic. Now my thunderous is toxic. And I'm not even defiant on this thing. And I have to deal with bulky raptor. And then my team is slowly whittled away. My thunderous is losing health every time it's coming back in. See 52% now. 34% now. I still haven't even killed the star raptor. Like it's pathetic. Like 28%. Porygon's out. Boom. Like I'm just getting throttled here. Normal is throttling me because like tell me what does electric have for normal what does it have for normal alone golem's not going to break holes it doesn't even do too much to porygon and it does nothing to absolutely does nothing to diggersby and diggersby can like hit it back which is the problem so gg so boom we got bitana here dragon i haven't seen this replay and actually but I just saw Dragon vs. Electric, so we'll see how it goes. This is the final replay before I'll end the video. And, you know, he goes in the Lottie. I'm gonna not mess around, go for the Psychic, get a crit. Nice, juicy crit. Gonna go back, he's gonna go into Dragology. I'm gonna go into Zapdos here. Now he gets to be able to claim a kill now. He's gonna double out Garchomp. So now he's gonna get his rocks up, of course. Yep, he's gonna get his rocks up. I'm gonna go for the Flash Cannon, do some damage to this thing. 
boom, EQ, not messing around, I want to save my Magnezone for later. He's going to switch out into Hydra, look at this, what do I have for a Specs Hydra? For, I have Coco here, but if it's Scarf, then I'm mad upset. I double out on his Zapdos trying to predict his Dragalge, I think. Yeah, I predict his Dragalge here, trying to, trying my best to get the rocks off the field. I need to get the rocks off the field because they're going to chip away at my team if not for the dragons. See, I can wall the Dragology with Spadef Zapdos. But now, boom, he brings in Cure. So now I got to pick him on the die before I figure out what his set is. Goes for the Fusion Bolt. Yep, Electric Terrain boosted. Fusion Bolt. I'm dead. Hydreigon. Not taking enough. Not taking enough. See, my Magnezone is, is near death now. So now what do I have to switch in my for my Latios and the Kyurem if it's Scarf? Or the Dragonite that it gets a, a Dragon hits. so it's just a tough matchup overall. And this this Latios is Scarf, and I didn't know that Scarf Latios was a thing back then, and I just click X. So that's everything I guess I can talk about for the most part concerning the, mo the state of Electric Monotype in the game so far. Overall, I still love the type. I like it. And it honestly has a lot of good matchups, but I don't think it's top tier. I don't think it's a top tier type, honestly. There are a lot better types out there than it. So maybe it's probably like the seventh best, I would say. Something like something around there. I don't know. So that's all I've got. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.